Hello, hello, and welcome to another video here on Karina's Creatures. It's been a while. A lot of personal things have been going on, but despite that and now everything else that's going on in the world, we're all here together today. So let's talk about something positive, and that is an update on Scotchy. So for those of you who don't know, Scotchy is my male boa constrictor imperator or boa imperator. And if any of you have seen um, my previous videos on him, you would have heard me refer to him as a female or as a she, because that is what he was sold to me as. So surprise, there goes that potential breeding project, but doesn't really matter. Wonderful pet, wonderful snake, and uh, let's bring him out. So I've decided I'm just gonna film from here. I'm gonna film taking him out, because why not? I don't think I've done that before. Um, so this is my little PVC rack of snakies, and I do have some other updates for you um, that'll come at a later date, I think, because there's a bunch of stuff. But uh, yeah, these are my units. These are the 4 by 2s and then this is divided, and I have my little, like, I'll just peel this off, my little name tags that I make. It's watercolor. So this is for... Pumpkin. Um, so yeah, I tried to make a little drawing, like a motif or whatever for each of them. So it looks nice and they all have one. And uh, yeah, so Scotchy is in here. Hi, honey. And as a recap, he is a hypomelanistic het for call albino, boa imperator. Hi, honey. And uh, yeah, it's been a while since I've made a video of him and look how much bigger he is. Isn't he just beautiful? Yeah, he's so nice and brown. That's that beautiful hypo gene coming through. And as you can see, he's got some beautiful blushing coming in on his sides. Yeah, honey. Yeah, and he's a really sweet boy. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so he's just over three years old now, and I almost can't believe it. When I first got him, he was so tiny and so skinny. He was really like a little noodle, and he had this big head for relative to his size, and these big, cute eyes. So cute. And um, he was so much more gray when I first got him. If you check out the older videos of Scotchy, you can see, like... He's so much more brown now. He has just warmed up, really like a glow up. And um, yeah, he's been good. He is eating um, large rats now, and I am doing like once every three weeks with the large rats. And uh, as you can see, he has a really nice body shape. Oh, take him off here to show you guys. So. Something you want to aim for with your boa constrictors is like a kind of a bread loaf shape. So they're a pretty tall snake, if that makes sense. Like if you see their side there and like this, it's a pretty squared off, like a loaf shape. And this is, I would say that he is like within the ideal body weight uh, range. Uh, so that's very important. They are very susceptible to fatty liver disease and snakes in general uh, do not fare well if they are overweight or obese. It is a, a death sentence. So you really want to watch that. So he seems to be doing well on his current diet and uh, great feeding response. I don't think he's ever refused a meal if if he has, it was like because he was in blue, uh, which is totally normal for snakes to do. I recommend, if you're unsure, if it's like a newer snake or whatever, uh, you test it out. You offer some food if they're in blue and it's their regular feeding schedule and um, see if they take it. And you kinda, and you kinda gotta learn uh, snake by snake. Some snakes will take it, some snakes won't. So. Yeah, you learn as you go. It helps if you have multiple snakes that way, uh, less chance of wasting a mouse or a rat or whatever the food item is, because if one doesn't take it, you can just give it to another. Um, so yeah, overall really good boy. 
Um, yeah, just beautiful. He is about four feet now, four feet long. And uh, so that's yeah, 48 inches. So I just wanna go over the general setup I give for my snakes. Um, we'll start with his enclosure here, which he, he likes to explore and, oh my God, he likes to explore and climb, as you can see. So everyone has a nice big water dish and a nice house. And I prefer these ones made out of plastic. This is just like your standard plastic reptile house. I find them easy to clean and sanitize. Uh, same reason for the paper towels, really easy to see any urates or feces. And um, yeah, easier to see if you need to spot clean or replace the whole thing, it works well. Um, and then the water dishes, these are actually the uh, dog bowls from Ikea. So it's a one piece plastic and it has like a handle under here. Uh, really nice smooth plastic, so it's easy. I just take it to the sink, wash it with some dish, dish soap every like week or so. Uh, you want to be feeling the inside, just rub your finger along it and you'll notice when there's bacteria building up, it'll, be, it'll come out sort of slimy. Uh, when that happens, I give it a good soap and then scrub and then of course really good rinse and some nice cool fresh water. I do not treat the water. I'm in, uh, I'm in Alberta, Canada right now. We have really good water and I drink the tap water. So I give it to my snakes. I know that that can be a little bit of a point of debate, but whatever, it's worked well. For and then uh, for them, um, I give them some RO water. So like reverse osmosis water or distilled water um, to mist down their enclosures. There's nothing wrong with the tap water, but um, being in Alberta, it is really hard water, so there's a lot of calcium in it. So what happens is I get like calcium deposits on the hides and in the enclosure and stuff, so just to sort of avoid that, and also to avoid clogging up my mist bottle. My misting bottle, I use reverse osmosis water or distilled water, so that's what I would recommend for that. Um, yeah, that is, that's the basic setup. Um, yeah, I have, I have heat tape under here, regulated by a little probe. And um, I have, ugh, I have herp stats for all of my guys. That's basically the top of the line thermostats. And um, for these enclosures here, I have a herp stat for, so each one has its own probe and has its own set temperature, blah, blah, blah. You can set a, a hot and cold alarm on it. So it'll actually start beeping at you if it drops below or above a temperature that you set. You can have day night cycles. Um, you can have lighting cycles, like so many different things. The herp stats, I love them. Uh, definitely would recommend. And um, yeah, that's that. So yes, I'm not entirely sure what's in frame, but here he is. As you can see, boas are very good at grabbing things. Um, I wouldn't necessarily like trust them to put them on a tree or something, but as you can see, they don't just like roly poly off of you like some other species do. They're very grabby and they're always like wrapping their tail around stuff. So especially as your boa gets larger, uh, you have to be more careful where you're sitting or hanging out because they will like wrap their tail around lamps shelves, plants, cups, like whatever is in the vicinity, they will grab it and rip it off. <laughs> so, cause they're so strong. Um, but yeah, like any other pet, it's just these different things you have to keep in mind and he's awesome, I love him. So thank you guys so much for stopping by my channel and watching this video. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them down below. I'd love to read them and get back to you guys. And also, if you have any other suggestions for future videos, let me know. Okay, bye-bye.